Hello, and thank you for joining us here at the 2023 Sloan Sports Analytics Conference, uh, and specifically here in the Competitive Advantage Talks room, sponsored by Kager, or the Craft Analytics Group. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end of the day. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, my name is Leo Fondriest, and I'm a first year MBA student at MIT Sloan. And it is my pleasure to introduce Win with AI, Exposing Winning Strategies in Sports, uh, presented by Brian Hall, the founder of Alpha Play, and part of New York University as well. So hopefully, we're saving a really good presentation for last. I know it's great meeting a lot of you today. Um, I'm glad to see you in the room. Um, but essentially, I represent, I'm a professor at NYU, and we created a collective with some folks at Harvard um, to kind of demonstrate new technologies in AI, specifically extremely powerful technologies that are being applied in other industries that are not being occur currently applied in sports. So this is almost like a proof of concept, and hopefully you see something really interesting. And this is our first public unveiling of this technology. So before we talk about artificial intelligence, let's talk about the human mind, right? Um, a bat and a ball together cost $1.10. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? The correct answer is five cents. Now, if you got this incorrect, 50% of Harvard and MIT students did as well. This is from a book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, by Daniel Kahneman. He's a Nobel Prize winning economist. And this thought, experience, uh, thought experiment is to demonstrate essentially how we might think we're acting very rationally and using data and maybe even analytics to make optimum decision making. But even the best and brightest can make incorrect uh, decisions based on reflexive, instinctual thinking rather than thinking extremely hard. And we'll talk about how AI can help any industry, including the sports industry, with this kind of problem. Now, the previous example was supposed to be a very easy question for the human mind, but an actual overwhelming question for the human mind is the amazing amount of growth of sports data. Right? Like, how does a team process and analyze all this data? We could barely grip you know, the previous question, but how are we gonna do you know, millions of data points on your team and your opposing teams? Luckily, the growth in computing power, and specifically AI, has kept up with this big data revolution, and other industries have really harnessed this in order to optimize their decision making and frankly, make a lot of money. Um, so we're trying to present this kind of technology today um, essentially, uh, what we have is an impossible war between human intelligence and artificial intelligence. And it's impossible because we can't keep up anymore. We evolve over millions of years. We are limited in our CPU and our memory by biology and genetics, right? But now AI is becoming stronger every year. Computers can network with each other and process things quicker than ever. And now, with machine learning, they can learn in seconds. Now, the story didn't start recently, right? Back in 1997, Deep Blue has dominated chess, right? So that was a big breakthrough for computing, and you could say sports, right? And then since 2016, AlphaGo has uh, defeated the greatest Go player in the world. That was a sport that was thought to be too complex for a computer ever to defeat a human champion. And since then, too, AI has defeated champions in esports, even cooperative play esports, and in poker, right? So today, what's essentially happened in these other sports, these other games, is that the top players in the world are forced to learn and train with an AI. Because if their opponent learns the AI techniques and they haven't, an opponent that is not as good as them can overpower them actually with techniques developed with neural networks. So Magnus Carlsen, uh, the famous chess player, was actually saying that an easy way he can see whether an opponent has been trained with a neural network is whether they sacrifice an extremely powerful chess piece early on. Now that's a cognitive bias that humans have. They don't want to make those kind of sacrifices. But a neural network can see that long term, if you actually want to win, if you want to dominate your opponent, of course you do that. Right? So this goes back to the biases in our mind, right? So 
because of the breakthroughs in all these sports, the Alpha Play team, which is a collaboration between NYU and Harvard, got an inspiration from this technology and said, if AI can reveal how to win in games, shouldn't it do the same in any sport? So what we did was we harnessed kind of the ever-growing computing power and data sets, and we built an AI platform that breaks down every game, every sport, into its fundamental, fundamental quantifiable elements, assesses every possible lineup and every possible outcome. And from this, the AI generates strategies through pattern recognition that a human mind necessarily couldn't detect, right? These are the nuances that even the greatest players in the world and other sports are not able to detect. And we call this project Alpha Play. Now, Alpha Play can work with these professional leagues, right? We've got a pretty big team here actually today. I'll, I'll introduce them in the last slide. But it works in tennis, cricket, hockey, uh, EuroLeague, European soccer, NFL, MLB, NBA. It's flexible enough. Machines today can quickly learn any sport and come up with dominant strategies for you to win. So let's explain how Alpha Play um, actually works and produces these strategies. Now, right here we have a basketball court, right? <clears throat> it's a little grayed out cartoon because it could theoretically be any sport, but we'll start with uh, an NBA, NBA game as, as an uh, initial example. Now, before any kind of AI analysis is done, you can calculate the average rate that the home team wins, right? But what Alpha Play does is it looks at um, prior data and trains from that, and then for an upcoming match, it then projects the home team's win rate. And what it does, which is special, is for that specific match, it takes all the features from your team and from the opposing team and, sh and actually detects what statistics, which players, for what reason, is actually contributing to you increasing your success as a victory. So here are statistics, these green bars, that Alpha Play thinks would be really good and helpful for you defeating that team, the home team defeating the away team. But at the same time, there's also statistics that can be weaknesses for your team, right? There's strengths of the other team. So let's look at like a random game in the test data, right? So this is Phoenix and Milwaukee, February 2021 season, right? So this is the season that Milwaukee won it all. Now, what's interesting is that there's actually five, this is the starting lineup, but there's also DJ Augustine, who's at the bottom, and he's kind of uh, circled in a, a different way because it's showing that he's actually coming off the bench, right? So Alpha Play is actually powerful enough to make uh, analysis related to even players coming off the bench, so you can vary minutes of playing time. So what it does is it, it took all the historical NBA data sets um, teams are really excited about using the system because they can use their proprietary stats as well, but this is like a very simple basic example just uh, with the type of fan stats that are publicly available. And we transform them into a, a system that the AI can understand, right? So you break down the game to fundamental units that in, in this case is like defensive stats, shooting stats, passing stats, even like player heights, right? You could even do the type of pick and rolls you're running where you're uh, shooting from the court with specific players. And then it uses the AI to actually come up with the analysis. So here it's saying that in this game, it's projecting that Phoenix has a 73% chance of winning. Now these bars with the little Phoenix logo are the stats that are helping Phoenix win if they're green, and red that are hurting Phoenix uh, if, if they're red. And they're about Phoenix players of the team, while these stats are about the Bucks players and their team. So what's surprising is a nuance that the AI detects is that the feature in this model that's most important to uh, actually Phoenix winning is Frank Kaminsky's assist ability. That's something that a human mind's not going to detect, right? It's specifically looking at the Bucks team and Phoenix and coming up with that. Now the next two stats are Chris Paul, right? That's something more obvious. Look, you know, he's a pretty good player. His, his shooting and assist ability are increasing Phoenix's chance of victory. But the next kind of scoring ability that it's flagging is DeAndre Ayton, right? He actually scored 70% um, in that game. So it's onto something, right? So what could Phoenix do when they see this? They go, hey, you know what? Before practice, the AI is saying, we actually have a mismatch with Ayton. Let's drop some more plays and use him as, as a more primary scorer than we would otherwise. 
Now, on the other side, you could see that Entente Coupeau is decreasing Phoenix's chance of victory, right? So, and that's another thing, of course, a human mind would detect Entente Coupeau is pretty awesome, right? He's, he's gonna decrease Phoenix's chance of victory. But a more nuanced thing that the AI detects is Bryn Forbes. Now, Bryn Forbes, even though he's on the Bucks, his assist ability is so poor that it's increasing Phoenix's chance of winning. Pretty funny, right? But on the other side, it's saying he's, you know, his scoring ability would actually be uh, kind of a strength uh, that the Bucks have over, over Phoenix when it's looking at all of the players. It can even look at defensive abilities, right? So here, DJ Augustine is such a poor defender coming off the bench that um, the AI is recommending that, they, uh, that Phoenix attack him, right? Go for him. He's actually, that's a, a defensive mismatch. And what's interesting is that there's hundreds of features in this uh, data and everything else, like this is only like the top 20 features, is that cumulative tiny little impact. So it's maybe like less than a 1% impact when you sum it all up. So let's see what actually happened that day, right? So Phoenix, it had a 73% chance of winning, but they only won by one point. Um, so what Phoenix did in that game is, of course, they utilized Chris Paul, like the AI recommended. Kaminsky also got very involved, but they did not leverage Aiden as they should have as a shot taker. And they did not exploit the poor defense of Augustine, right? So essentially, when you fail to take um, mismatches that the AI uh, has, has seen, you're essentially lowering your probability of victory, all else equal, right? So uh, let's look at uh, the Bucks. So Antante Cupo scored 47 points that game, did really well, he overperformed, right? So it almost like decreased Phoenix's chances of, of victory, right? But with um, what's interesting is that the model didn't point out Booker as like a mismatch. It didn't say Booker is a reason why Phoenix is stronger than the Bucks. So they actually, one way you can look at this is, look, I'd rather have Booker take the shots than Chris Paul, right? So in that sense, Booker was overutilized in this specific game. Um, he didn't shoot as well as other players on his team. And also, uh, the Bucks did not leverage Forbes as a shot taker, you know, that the AI uh, flagged. And, you know, just that little nuance that Forbes is a mismatch between the two teams, that could have maybe made the one-point difference. Now, the next question for the AI. What does Alpha Play really think about Holland? So we have a game, Man City, Man United, from October 2nd, uh, 2022. So again, it, does, it has the same system, except now it's looking at historic soccer data. Um, and it's projecting the, the features that it thinks is helping Man City win at, as a home team. And it's saying that uh, it thinks Man City has a 58.9% you know, chance of winning this match. So these are the features uh, related to the two teams. Now, what does it think of Holland? Does anybody think he's the, the most prominent factor for increasing Man City's chances of winning? He's, he's a, he is a good factor, right? He's the second and third most important factors, but it's actually gun to one. So this is kind of like groundbreaking here. For the first time, you're able to see striker statistics with midfielder statistics and see the impact of the game, right? So uh, Gundawan is seen as a very strong, specifically against this Man United team. It's detecting the patterns in the data between the two teams and is seen as a, a, a very big strength. And then, of course, De Bruyne, his through balls are an important factor as well. Now, in this like alpha play breakdown, it's saying that Man United is pretty overpowered. But the one feature that it's detecting that it thinks is like a pretty good mismatch that Man United could exploit is Rashford's assist ability. And then, of course, actually, this, this has 600 features, this model, and, that, and that's it. You know, the other 600 features are up in that little tiny bar. But you can break down any stat. Any stat from the team can be analyzed this way. So the actual result of the game was a six to three um, victory by Man City. And uh, what happened was actually Holland scored a hat trick and two of the three uh, passes in the hat trick were from De Bruyne. So that's interesting. Uh, Gundogan was used in very dangerous positions. So in a sense, Man City exploited the mismatches that were flagged by the AI. And Rashford was so disrupted in the game that he had no assists. So it's almost like eerie, right? Like, you know, maybe there's a brilliant manager that comes around every 10 years, right, in a sport and is able to see these kind of nuances between the two teams and has a really strong staff. But if you don't have that, you can use an AI to help you detect those patterns. Now let's see what Man United did. So um, the key player, if you were uh, seeing this in Man United, is you'd want to smother Gundogan. 
but you'd want to try to disrupt that flow. He's such an important part to this mismatch between the two teams. But he wasn't actually disrupted. He was subbed out at minute 75, not earlier. And actually, they subbed out Rashford very early at minute 59. Why would you do that? That's the most important mismatch between the two teams, right? So these are the kind of human cognitive biases that are coming into play if you're not using AI, right? You're just seeing him the first 59 minutes and saying, oh, he didn't do well, when actually he's a very strong piece of your team. So Alpha Play works with you know, several sports, right? Here's some pictures of, we even have cricket up there. There's a little red cricket ball. Um, but essentially, what you, what you could do with technologies like Alpha Play is it lets you understand how to maximize your wins, right? You can break down all the sports analytics, all those brilliant things that are being presented over the years at this conference into this model, and it actually quantifies how much it takes to, um, how much it contributes to a specific victory against a specific opponent. So with this knowledge, before matches, you can optimize your plays, your drilling, your training to try to exploit these mismatches. Um, and then that allows you to action on these opportunities in the game. And what's interesting about the system too is you can actually kind of take player projections and put those players on your, in your lineup and see, does this really impact my team's ability to beat our, our rival? Like, if I spend $300 million on this player, is it gonna get me in the playoffs? Am I gonna win the championship? These are the kind of questions you can now more uh, quantify with AI. And it's a very exciting time as a result. So, you know, this was a collaboration between NYU and folks from Harvard, and it was a, you know, this is a very complex project to do so many different sports. So I just wanted, you know, the team is actually here in the front row, and I just wanted to highlight that this is a team effort. They're, they only have one presenter at a time, but it was really the, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of, of many other people who've done some brilliant things. Any questions? How did you choose your features? Um, you mean to choose the features? Well, the, the great thing about the model is you, you can throw anything in, right? So for us, we just use publicly available data as a, you know, as a very simple demonstration for this presentation. But teams are very excited about using their proprietary information. And what you want to do is you want to choose features that are related to a player's impact in a game. Right, so like their expectations of performance in the game. Those, those are the kind of features you want to use. How far along are you all in actually developing the product? You said you used very basic data uh, to actually produce these outcomes. And how far away from actually commercializing this are you? Um, I think what's, so uh, we talked some, to some really smart people in the industry and they kind of urged us to present this here today. And I think that what it essentially does is it's, it's a question of how much do teams want to apply AI? How much does a league want to apply? Are they ready, right? All it needs is their data. They already have that data. So it's just a shift of mindset. Is a general manager or a coach really willing and able to listen to an AI or not? Yeah, I'm assuming you're using deep learning, neural network, uh, based AI systems. If that's the case, then it kind of a black box. Its explainability could be a problem. So how you overcome that? Maybe give an example in tennis. So what's interesting is um, the graph we just showed is the explainability of a black box. That's why it's so different, because we've been able to overcome that, that problem, where before you just get a prediction of, of like what's going to happen. But teams. They don't care about the specific win percentage of, you know, against a specific opponent. They want to know exactly what's going on, why. Like, is there something I can do about that? Can I maximize my chances or minimize my chances? Can you do in tennis? Uh, in tennis? You, uh, so, for example, if you were, uh, you can put in like the type of surface, um, where to hit the ball, you know, like the heat maps of the shots and everything like that. So, when you have a specific opponents, it'll say, oh, a, a certain backhand, a certain area of the court. That's your strength against this specific opponent who's not as good at handling that. Or you know, because you're better on clay, it's increasing your probability of victory 10%. So then the opponents like, you know, can actually kind of break down you know, what is it that is actually causing me 
to be less likely to win? Oh, actually, I need to train more on clay, right? It's not my shots or anything. It's just specifically the surface. So that's something you could break down. Uh, so you're saying that um, you can use basically any feature that you have in your data set. Uh, in your presentation, you had something like defensive ability, uh, passing ability, et cetera. Is that the feature or is that like an So it's a, they were in quotes, right? So um, in order for the machine to use, uh, to, to understand all this, it can't, it can't really use the data as it currently is that fans know. It, you have to do a transformation specifically in order for the AI to understand it a little bit better. So um, it could be any passing metric. That's why we just say passing ability or, or sorry, uh, accessibility. Um, but it's, it's a proprietary kind of way of transforming the information so that it actually works with the machine. That's why it's like in quotes. Okay, so, so I guess uh, if I can reformulate my question, is that something that needs to be defined by whoever wants to use this or is that something that you guys have come up with and that is sport specific or whatever. Yeah, I mean, essentially, uh, any, you could use any of this common data and then like through our proprietary techniques or, or whatever proprietary data that a team has, through our techniques, we're able to then kind of train it, uh, this AI and build it in a special way. Um, but yeah, there is some sort of like layering on by the expertise of our team in order to transform the, the, the analytics you're used to. Okay, thank you. Um. First, I just want to say that was a really inspiring talk. Um, I can't wait to see how alpha play impacts player behavior like you saw in Go and chess and poker. Um, I think the hardest part of deep learning is asking the right questions. Do you have any tips on formulating problems as data-driven learning instead of model-based optimization methods? So, I mean, there were a lot of, t like, just going to this conference and hearing panels talk, you can hear the problems teams and leagues have with data, right? So it's like those actual problems on the ground of, t of people trying to manage their team is actually a great way to start with the problem. Like that's the problem we should be solving. We were at the soccer analytics panel, we were kind of smiling because they were like, yeah, there's just not a good way to measure a midfielder's impact versus a striker. And we're like, oh wait, come to our talk at 5.45, right? We'll show you. So it, there is like, it's more like talking to the team and the, and the user, the actual producer and user of the data to see what really would help them, and then you go solve that problem. Thank you. Uh, how are you thinking about interface and visualization for teams, like on top of the model? So, um, I mean, that's a good question. Essentially, the visualization really varies by the sport in the game, right? So some, you know, games are just gonna be really clear mismatches in certain players, you know, having things. And then others are, are much more nuanced. So there's different ways you could do it. You could, it could actually be a table with every single stat in the, prob in the effect on probability. So that, you know, teams could just use Excel and, and crunch it the normal way. Or you, we actually have a platform on AWS that's like interactive where you can just pull up the whole league, bring specific games and then and see what the output is. So I guess maybe uh, basketball, I don't know if this would work as much in soccer, but like when you're talking about a team that's like maybe favored by a lot and then you come into halftime and it's, you try to implement what the model says and it's not really working, let's say you rerun it, right? Could you that, put- that, That's what you do, yeah. Would it be able to update or would it give similar yes, results? Yes, it's real time. So if your plan goes awry and you're like, oh man, like our people are underperforming or somebody else on their team is overperforming, you can just rerun it and instantly it would, it would come up with like a potential new game plan for what the strengths and weaknesses are. So then my follow-up would be like how, let's say a player's underperforming, would the model then just assume they're gonna have that like a bad second half as well? Or is it gonna be Well, see, that's middle? the problem. It's like up to the coach or the team. It could just yeah. be statistical, right? Like you happen to be underperforming in the first half, but maybe you then make up for it in the second half. So it's really up to the expertise of the team and the sport to figure out what they think the projections would be going forward. Maybe it's like a specific strategy, like in football, maybe their defense is just smothering something and there's nothing you, need, you can do about it and then you're, you're trying to think of another game plan. But if you're in basketball, maybe it's just simple chance that somebody missed, you know, is, is shooting 20% right? and then they're gonna shoot 80% the, the second half. First off, really enjoyed the presentation. Um, 
Everything you presented up to this point has been uh, game data. I'm just curious, does the uh, AI, the power uh, of your company, have the power to analyze like full season data, or for that, is it just kind of like averaging like all of the, the game data together? Yeah, I think what's useful about this is like traditional simulations could simulate how well somebody does in a season, right? So this technology isn't necessarily do that. It's to break down specific matchups with specific lineups using specific strategies and look at it on a game by game basis so that you can kind of come up with a game plan for your entire season per game. So the model um, measures uh, expected impact, but it doesn't measure your, the, the, the um, AI's estimate of the confidence that it has in that analysis. And I suspect that the confidence level does change a lot from I issue to issue. How do you build that and where are you in building that into the model? Because that actually also might impact your ability to get into the teams. Yeah, I mean, one of the issues is um, if you don't have really good data, you know, your confidence is going to be wider, right? Uh, and uh, what's great about the teams and their proprietary information is that it's richer, so it actually shrinks the kind of uh, confidence band, so you're more confident about what's happening. But uh, what the thing is, though, the human mind today in making these decisions, are they using a confidence band? Yeah, so that, that, I mean, that's almost like mystical to me, like an AI person, like that's like a religious thing. Oh yeah, I'm gonna use my experience. And, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's like, yeah, there, there is confidence intervals, but it, you know, it's, it's definitely like a step up in improvement from like the current methodology uh, of what people are trying to do to, to kind of balance offensive, defensive, passing data. You know, like these things are really hard to figure out. Thank you everyone. <laughs>